In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You're advised that any views expressed by the hosts or their guests are not necessarily the views of Tuggy Entertainment or its partners. Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio live on toginet.com. Co-hosted by Robin Boyd and Sandra Beck, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the many resources that are available in both the public and private sector and we'll be sharing helpful information from women all over the world we'll cover everything military from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder to navigating government programs dealing with family issues to the struggles of deployment along with being a working mother both in and out of the home this is military mom talk radio and here are your hosts sandra beck and robin boyd Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd. And, Robin, we've got a lot going on today's show. Oh, absolutely. Well, we always do. That's one of the things that's so great about Military Mom Talk Radio. We just pack it full of cool stuff. No matter what you might want to know, we'll find it. That's right. That's right. Now, we got some information. Rita Cosby was on our show uh, this past year. Uh, Her book, Quiet Hero, was about her father's uh, time serving in, I think it was Poland, wasn't it, Rob? Yeah. uh, Actually, it was June 13th, 2011. We had Rita as our guest. And um, her dad, uh, her book, Quiet Hero, Secrets from My Father's Past, was fascinating. And uh, do you want me to go ahead and read this now, Sam? Sure. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. we we got her, an email from her uh, saying that she wanted everyone to know that her beloved father, Richard, passed away on June 25th. He had been battling advanced cancer the past two years and was very sick, especially in the last three months. And he spent his final weeks in an ICU unit in Alexandria, Virginia. And fortunately, Rita was able to be with him every day in the past few weeks and actually did her shows for from the D.C. Bureau. So what a blessing to have been able to spend that last part of his journey uh, together. And if you do go back and listen to the show, you'll find what uh, an incredible... Uh, awareness this was for Rita in that she didn't know a lot about her father until she was an adult and in going through some things in the attic discovered uh, these these treasures in in treasures not meaning some sort of in a marvelous way treasures meaning in a very serious way um, and the things that when he was uh, a prisoner of war so um, and then she said I had just told him how his legacy will live on forever through her best selling book and um, and how much she loved him in his final weeks they hung a large poster of, of the book in his room and many people in the hospital who had who were were already familiar with the emotional story had the book and he and were able to sign um the book which was amazing and then they had such admiration for mr cosby and for what he had endured and the doctors were all doing all they could but uh it was emotional for the staff emotional of course for the family and it was wonderful that rita was able to spend those last moments with her dad um and down at the bottom she says at the uh, service they're going to include some polish military honors in the service um the service will be if you are in the Alexandria, Virginia area. Uh, it'll be at the Blessed Sacrament Church, which is on Braddock Road, and it will be 3 p.m. on August 3rd. You know, Rob, one of the things I loved most about Rita's book, and Rita's a lot of fun. She's really a great gal, and we she had a is. good time with her on the show, um, was that she got 
uh, people from a different generation to open up about their military service. You know, so many of our service members, especially up, you know, those ones that are in World War II, in Vietnam era, a lot of them really don't want to talk about it. And I know it was really hard for Rita to get all this information together, but she paved the way really for people of that generation to really share their stories, which isn't something, you know, culturally that we've had before. It's true, and especially with the awareness that we are uh, having with the Military Writers Society of America that joins us so frequently, we're realizing that it is such a gift for people who have had their experiences in the military to document them, to chronicle them, and the future generations are, are just enlightened by the stories. May they be small stories, may they be uh, traumatic stories, they're still a story that the next generation needs to know and hear about. And in Rita's case, she didn't know why her she was so estranged from her dad until all of a sudden this, um, this discovery happened and this re- reconnection and um, the rest of, of his life was blessed because they had a new relationship with each other. Well, and I just think it's so important, um, Robin, you know, for some of this stuff. We talk a lot about, you know, the iHistory Project. We talk about, you know, with Jeffrey Worthington. We talk about, um, gosh, what was that other one, the Military Writers Society of America mm-hmm. and the chronicling of these stories. Mm-hmm. I watched a documentary this weekend uh, called Forgiving Dr. Mengele, which was about a Jewish uh, Holocaust survivor, a twin, who uh, came out and was very public about her grief, her frustration, and then the work mm-hmm. she did. Did with the German government to get medical records released and to get a doctor, a Nazi doctor, to come and sign basically a peace treaty, an apology treaty. And I thought it was so important that these stories be told because, especially with my kids, Rob, you know, at five and eight, you know, these. The pictures of airplanes are just grandpa's airplanes, you know, the Mm -hmm. the P-38, those things um, that are in a book. They're not even real, you know, unless we take them to the air show and you see something. The stories are all about the people. You know, yes, we like the equipment and all the cool things that are done, but it's the stories that keep history alive. And that's really what Rita did so well in discovering her own family's story. Shh, I have a, I have Zach on my lap. <laughs> hi, Zach. <laughs> Robert says hi. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hi, hon. <laughs> I have to tell you, talking about how quick time flies, the last pictures that you sent, uh, I think it was on 4th of July, your boys are growing up. It's fast, isn't it? It is. All of a sudden, I, you know, I looked at Zach and I said, oh, he's losing that baby face. He's getting to be grown up. <laughs> he is. He's getting to be grown up, and he's learning to be patient to wait for commercial breaks to come in to get new batteries for the Wii remote. I won't say today's but very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to tell you, Sand. We we um, talking about kids. I was with my kids this weekend, and we did a concert um, on Sunday night, and we just had a blast. Uh, my son's girl is uh, the artistic director for a theater group. And and part of her theater group is doing um, d- uh, different decades of Broadway musicals that weren't top-notch uh, Broadway hits. And it has just been so much fun. So I wanted to say, you know, whether your kids are 5 and 8 or whether your kids are almost 30, they, it's just wonderful to be spending time with your kids. So we have a, a busy show coming up. Uh, I've got to check what, where we're at as far as uh, we're not quite ready for the break. But I, we want to just maybe talk a little bit about Terry, who's coming on in the next segment. Um, you've uh, been familiar with Terry for quite a while, haven't you? I have, I have. Terry um, has been working with me for a while, and she's uh, she's just a great resource for divorce uh, recovery and and you know what to do after divorce. You know, it's so hard. Um, the military has such a high rate of divorce. You know, both during active duty service members and uh, post uh, post service. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's astounding. I think it's around sixty percent, seventy percent right now. Oh and, my uh, word. It is I didn't very, realize very high. it would be that high. Well, 
I guess I'm not, it's not that I'm surprised, but it really is shocking when you start to put it into statistics. Well, especially when you're looking at, um, you know, you're looking at people who are separated and, you know, with the past deployments, you know, some of those deployments ended up going really long and it's, uh, it's a terrible strain on a family on a good day. Yeah, yeah. And I think one of the things, it's not that divorce is easy in any industry, but I think what's difficult sometimes is when you're deployed, you may not have the luxury of dealing with your personal life if you have to be uh, in wherever they've sent you. And I'm not quite sure how... um, flexible they are as far as giving you time off when you need but i can only imagine that being active military must put a huge crimp on anything let alone processing a divorce so well and i know a lot of it is the upheaval of the family moving from post to post having you know difficulty with uh establishing new relationships and friendships school is an issue uh one of my friends she just flat out after her fifth or sixth move her pcs move just said i'm not moving wow. again i'm not pulling the kids out of school she has five kids five cool school age kids and they range in from elementary to high school and she just wasn't up for another move and that's causing a you know it's one of those things where we talked about it on the air one time where people say well you knew what you were getting into when you got into it well no you don't (laughs) yeah we've we've mentioned that over and isn't that true yeah and you know five years into it is different than 10 years into it or 15 or 20 and Mm -hmm. i think a lot of our families especially with the war are just getting tired yeah yeah. Um, and and I, I know that we'll have a lot more questions to ask Terry. And I do know that Terry's going to have to scoot at, uh, at about 35 after the hour. So we're going to want to get her right in after the break. Um, it, we'll uh, be going to commercial in about uh, 25 seconds. I do want to make sure that everybody goes to uh, iTunes and checks out our June 13th, 2011 show. That will be the show that you will hear about Rita Cosby's story. Uh, You'll find out more information about her book and um, we encourage you to say a prayer and uh, we'll see you after the break. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. In today's business world, a helping hand or idea that doesn't come with an invoice is a treasured find. And if that happens to you, then you need to pay it forward to keep other entrepreneurs from making mistakes or getting a raw deal. It's called Paying It Forward with Josephine Girasi. Wednesday mornings at 10, 9 a.m. Central, Josephine is going to have the guests describe their accomplishments, the lessons they've learned, both good and bad, and then sharing those pieces of knowledge as we create a movement of Paying It Forward. For more information about Josephine, her business, and background, you can go to MyMomKnowsBest.com. Josephine Girasi has always been a problem solver. She saw this need and has turned it into a movement. It's Paying It Forward. With tips, tools, and advice, and hard lessons learned, these pieces of knowledge can make a huge difference for you, your business, and others. So join us for Paying It Forward with Josephine Girasi, Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., 9 a.m. Central, on Doginet.com. Fertility is an extremely personal subject. Tune in Monday nights at 9, 8 Central for the Fertility Forum with infertility psychotherapist and expert Phyllis Martin on Toginet.com. This is the show about infertility, gaining support, and information. Phyllis will assist you in navigating the disappointments and decisions that often accompany the difficult journey from diagnosis to conception, pregnancy to parenthood. She is passionate about her work and is an expert in the donor egg field bringing both her personal and professional experience to all she does. Ms. Martin has extensive experience in helping patients cope with infertility, pregnancy loss, adoption, surrogacy, miscarriage, pregnancy termination, and creative family building. 
She knows what you're going through, and she's here to help. It's the Fertility Forum with your host, Phyllis Martin, Monday nights at 9, 8 central on toginet.com. Put a food in your ass, it's the American way. Hey, Uncle Sam, put your name at the top of his list and a statue. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we have had a lot of requests, Robin, through our Facebook groups, through our Twitter mm-hmm. groups, um, and the people writing into the show to talk about divorce, because divorce is such a high uh, occurrence in today's military. Some of the things I read online said as high as 65, 60, 65% of all military families uh, during the time of their service will get divorced, and, you know, that can mean a, you know that's like a 15 percent jump over i think the national average that's really scary uh scary in that um you feel that um uh, if if uh you're not doing something right possibly and maybe that's what we can uh start out with um with terry it's not about what you did do it's it's probably another another approach that we need to look at it Sure, sure. Um, well, I'd like to bring Terry Sloan on. Uh, she's a divorce uh, coach. She talks about divorce recovery and then dating after divorce. And I brought her on today because, you know, for the first in a series of uh, shows about divorce, when, Terry, are you on the line with us? Yes. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, welcome. Hi, Terry. Welcome to the show. Thank you um, for inviting me. Thanks. A lot of stuff I've read online with divorce says you can prepare for divorce. You know, they talk about, you know, before you file, get your documents together, get copies of the kids' birth certificates, you know, figure out this, figure out that. Can you really ever be prepared for a divorce? I think you're really never prepared for it because when it happens, it's still a shock, even if you have an inkling that you think it's going to happen because it's a total disruption of a family, of coupling, of children, of, you know, your whole lifestyle. And But I think it's important that if you think there is disharmony in your marriage and you're headed that way, that even if it's very painful, to address it within yourself and, and try to start getting be, being prepared. And what does that mean? You have to be prepared financially to know what your assets and liabilities are and your living expenses and your lifestyle and and as well as to try to get your support system going on an emotional level too, meaning having friends that are supportive, being surrounded by positive people, and even having advocates like a trained coach, a counselor, a divorce coach, or someone like myself to help smooth the process because it's really at its best um, very confusing and and very uh, devastating in its best way. Do you think... think, I'm sorry, go go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say because it doesn't matter who is the one that initiates it, both parties are still going to be having trauma and, and great difficulty. Whether you're the initiator or the receiver, you, you're, everyone, their whole life is changed. You're going from a couple situation to thinking single, and, and there's so many balls to juggle, especially when the children are also involved. Hello? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. We must have. Did we lose Sandra? That, you know, should I go on to the other phone? I was worried about that. No, I think it's no, me. Oh, it was Sandra. I was sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Can you hear I'm me? Because I'm on a portable. 
Oh, and I'm having internet connection trouble. So, Rob, you'll just have to jump in when you can't hear me. Um, one of the things that happens with our military families is we have families that grow up on post or they're lived on base. They know the military lifestyle. They get divorced. The mom goes back home, you know, to her family, sometimes takes the kids with them because the parent is now deployed overseas. And they have not only the fractured family to deal with, but and the divorce and the separation, but they have to deal with a totally different environment and Terry how do you I know in a lot of divorces like for me you know there was a home change and uh, cars changed we had a completely downside Uh, the kids all of a sudden started going overnight with their dad after a couple years how do you rally through all those changes how do you how do you get through them day to day That's an excellent question, especially if someone's life was, if it was the military mom that's now going back into a family life. Is that what you're talking about, Sandra? Yes, absolutely. Had had to adjust? Well, I think before she, you know, even thinks about divorce, she has to think about um, how can she change from going from a military to back to a home life. And it must be overwhelming to just even make that transition. And I think uh, in, in that case, I I think there should be counseling to help someone adjust to that kind of transition before they even contemplate going through a divorce. They just have to do an adjustment kind of, uh, you know, counseling situation to help them go through just a whole different life, even talking about a different lifestyle change. The whole thing changes. There's the whole a whole thing. change. It must be monumental, and maybe it would be time for somebody like that not to rush into a divorce because just first is the family adjustment and a home life adjustment in a different way again. Absolutely. Uh, so they have to reacquaint themselves in, in a new environment, in a whole different fa- structure that they're not used to. So I, I, I would just suggest that before they jump into a divorce, they think, is it, is it the divorce or the person, or is it this new situation that I'm, I'm really just not adjusted to and I have to start getting reacquainted with everyone in, in a new light? So I wouldn't probably just jump. I would j- jump into counseling. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I would be jumping. It is, because I hear the same story over and over. It's too much change. I can't take any more change. You know, a change of location, a change of benefits, a change of finances. The kids have new schools. You know, the military family is really resilient, but there's a there's a limit. There's a limit to everybody. Um, Terry, what would you say is one of the best things a military mom can do with respect to this transition? Would you tell her to make a divorce plan, you know, something that well, is she, executed I, over time, or what would you recommend? Well, as I said, I think the first thing I would suggest would be some counseling. But while they're, if they're really serious and they have it already predetermined in their mind that this is what they want, they definitely want a divorce, then they have to be prepared. And what do I mean by that? They have to go to a financial advisor, a divorce financial strategist, to, to go over their finances with. They, and, um, and also, I can't say it enough times, for the emotional roller coaster, they do need some professional help. Because friends can do one thing, and, and I'm not suggesting that they don't speak to friends and family members who they trust that they could count on, but still someone that is sort of, you know, neutral and can guide them would be a, a better way rather than, you know, all of our friends want best for us, but we, they tend to take sides or positions where uh, a therapist or a counselor or a divorce coach is not positional has your best interest in heart, totally, right? What's best for you, what's best for your family, what's best for your children, and could even advise them if they didn't have a financial person, maybe would have who to go to for that as well. But take slow steps. I think you can't rush into these things. You have to really think them through because it's, it's very complicated. The decisions you make today will not only be decisions you have to live with today, but will be decisions that will be with you for the rest of your life. Well, and Terry, you know, one of the things that I had during my divorce is I had a divorce coach, and a lot of people laughed at me. They giggled. They're like, oh, oh you know, you need a divorce coach. And the answer was, yeah, I did. Because you needed an advocate. 
I needed an advocate and I wanted somebody to tell me what to expect. You know, a lot of my friends who are divorced could give me bits and pieces, but you know, a divorce coach, somebody who does this for a living, listens to divorces day in and day out. Um, she really helped me a lot because she would say, okay, Sam, would you go to court? These are some of the things you might feel. These are the, some of the things you might hear. These are, you know, she wasn't but, getting into the law aspect of it, just preparing me so she, I wasn't caught off guard. She can also, if you're too emotional, speak on your behalf to your attorney and explain to your attorney in a different language than when, you, you know, how we all go crazy when we're upset and say, this is what Sandra meant. She didn't mean that she doesn't want their father to see them, she meant he needs to have time, a certain time element that she wants him to, you know, she can, she could be a communicator for you when you're too stressed. And it is. And it's that's really very hard. helpful. And she can also speak to the attorneys and explain what you're going through because we all tend to, when we're very emotional, um, not be able to really present ourselves in the best light. And But a divorce coach can do you know, help you move through the process, help you think more clearly, and give you a forward direction where you know this, you have a plan together. This is what you need to do, a structure, an organization, a plan, a strategy, and uh, help you with your self-esteem, recouping who you are again as a person, because it, it's really a devastating experience for anyone that's going through a divorce. I mean, uh, just the thought of you were a couple to be a single person now and, you know, um, having the worries financially that you didn't have before you, you, and also emotionally, you know, how to d divide the children, which nights, which days, if you're having joint custody, solo custody. It, it's depending on your age, there are always different issues, but all the issues are the same as far as you need to have a financial reality and you need a support in your emotional reality. So much good information, Terry. We're talking with Terry Sloan, uh, a wonderful divorce coach, uh, uh, counselor. Her website is T E R R I S L O A N E dot com. You'll find out more information about Terry as well as the, uh, the, the wonderful resources that can, uh, be yours if you do seek Terry's help or someone like Terry if you're not in her area. Uh, we're going to be back after the break with Terry just for a few more minutes and then we're going to meet John E. Nivola, the author of The Last Jump. So we're looking forward to that. Don't go away. We'll be right back after these tunes. <laughs> Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Okay, we will. We're going to teach you how to tell your money where to go. It's Intelligent Investing with Pam Otten on Toginet. Learn how to be a savvy investor from someone who has your best interest at heart. Pam Otten is a financial advisor who loves to help successful business owners and entrepreneurs understand the mysteries of the investment world. And she's not afraid to share that knowledge. Pam is an unashamed Christian and qualified kingdom advisor, which means she's trained and committed to integrating biblical principles into her financial advice. Pam believes investing isn't rocket science. This is the financial advisor who's in your corner and truly understands and cares about you and helping you achieve your goals. Securities and advisory services are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIPC. It's Intelligent Investing with Pam Otten on Toginet. I am not the woman I used to be. I'm free with Minister Diane Jones. Monday nights at 10, 9 central on Toginet. This is your chance, ladies, to hear stories of hope and healing from someone who's been there. Someone who has fought back from the horrors of incest. Minister Diane's innocence was stolen from her in the land of alcoholism and mental illness, which led to her being emotionally, physically, and sexually abused by her parents. Yet in spite of this trauma, she has gone on to become a successful wife, mother, registered nurse, and minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
I'm not the woman I used to be. I'm free is a straight up show to enlighten you and to lighten your load. Do not let the weight of this world or the things that have happened to you control your life. For more on the show and Diane and her book, The Story of Me, email her directly from her show page here on Toginet. Then join us for I'm not the woman I used to be. I'm free with Minister Diane Jones. Monday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. There ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd, and we're with divorce recovery coach Terry Sloan. She comes from us out of New York City, one of the best and brightest minds in the business. Um, when you guys uh, think about filing for divorce, uh, I've been there. It took me about a year to finally pull the trigger. I couldn't do that uh, any sooner. I had two kids. I had a company. I had property. I had a lot going on in my life. And as much as I wanted it to be over, I was really glad that I took the time to take it slow, to talk to advisors, to talk to attorneys, to talk to financial planners, an accountant, um, I talked to the bank about, you know, the possibility of me keeping or losing my home. There's a lot to go over. And the more you know, the less crazy it feels. And um, I obviously, I've only been through one divorce, so I can't compare one to the other, Terry. But do you think in some respects, knowledge and taking it slow can really help us make better decisions? Absolutely. First of all, in different states, there are different laws. So I think People should be aware of what the laws are in their state for divorce. I think that's very important. I think they should also know that there is litigation and mediation, which are are quite different. One, you know, is more peaceful than the other. And obviously the best would be if you and your spouse can reconcile it, you know, calmly, which I shouldn't say calmly, but in a way that would be in the benefit of the children, what would be best for the children where children are concerned. Um, And I think it would be important if you have documents like uh, your copies of your tax returns, you should have copies of all important papers so that if something happens suddenly and unexpectedly where you're not prepared, you have these papers available. And, you know, because we can't predict... The future, we only know our present, and sometimes the present can change in a minute. So I think preparation is your most important thing to, you know, have at your side, especially during this, you know, challenging time. <laughs> you were going to say crazy. I'm gonna I say was going to say crazy. Thank you. <laughs> roller coaster time would be much better, right? Yes, it's definitely it does sound a roller much coaster. <laughs> but I think the calmer, and I'm, I'm saying that with tongue in cheek, you can be the more you can keep yourself healthy during this course. And what do I mean by that? I think more exercise than ever to get rid of the stress would be very, very important because you think when a bad marriage is stressful, divorce is even more stressful. That's what I tell people. I tell my friends, you know, they're, you know, because no I'm matter, the, yeah, no I'm matter what's side. going on, well, it's bad during a marriage, but what's going on to you during a divorce is so much worse. It is so much worse. And I always tell people it gets worse before it gets better. And I would say um, I'm about two years after the finalization of my divorce, and it's starting just to start to feel normal. Well, I think that's probably Could- very normal that it takes a couple, several years, they say, within one to five years for some people. You know? Could I ask one question of either of you, actually? When you do have someone, a, a divorce coach, helping you through all of this, what about two years down the road? Do you still have that same coach supporting you, or is it really uh, the, the coach helping you through the actual legal procedure and then maybe you need somebody different to follow you through because obviously I would think a few years down the road you're still needing 
advice and support and guidance? Well, there are people that just do divorce coaching and that are certified divorce coaches and go through uh, the process of mediation to become a divorce coach, which I did. In addition to that, um, I have a counseling license and I have as well over the years become was also a dating coach so i'm like a one-stop shopping to say the least but in most cases a divorce coach just concentrates on the process of divorce and the, the emotional you know problems of divorce and also helping with working through the issues with the attorney and in mediation, they, they're, they're very, very helpful as well. But they're, they're all different kinds of divorce coaches now, Sandra. So if someone was Googling divorce coach, they would see that there are different types of divorce coaches today. With different Absolutely, because mine backgrounds. helped me more with the emotional aspect of it. Mine helped me more with, you know, dealing with the fact that, you know, since I was the one who filed, you know, breaking up the kids, taking the kids away from the father, you know, all those horrible things that people said to me. Don't you feel guilty about taking your kids away from their father? And, and I won't get into the, the why of why I did what I did, but um, I needed a lot of support on that. And everybody had an opinion, and not very many of my friends went through divorce. Oh. Uh, so that that was really difficult to be the first one in my family and the first one in my sphere of influence. When I went through a divorce, I went to a therapist to help me through divorce. And although it was very helpful on the emotional side, I could have used someone as a divorce coach in, with, in addition to her to help me on the side with dealing with my attorney and the financial issues. She just helped me, just solo emotional. I could have used someone to do all three. So uh, in today's world, it's a new area of divorce coaching. They are not only helping on the emotional factors, they're helping with the attorneys and with the financial people, as just helping you communicate in an effective way that you're getting the best result from the people that you're hiring. It could be cost-effective because what could take someone when they're in emotional you know, turmoil could take them days. A divorce coach, for example, could take an hour, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's so I, th I think that's very helpful. They can, they can kind of um, laser the approach, for choice of a better word, you know. Just cut through the chase of everything and make everyone's life easier. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Terry, thank you so much for being with us today on the show. I think well, your insight has helped us a lot. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I enjoyed being on your show today. I hope I was very helpful. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, good Abs night. Bye, everyone, and thank you for having me again. Bye-bye. Let's put the website out again one more time, Sandra. It's uh, www.terrysloan.com, and Terry spells her name T-E-R-R-I-S-L-O-A-N-E.com. Wow. Um, it, it must be one of those things, Sandra, that once you've been there, done that, you sort of know the steps. But it's going to be scary when you first start going through it. Absolutely. Well, that's the one thing the therapist did for me or the divorce coach did for me. I didn't ever walk through thinking, oh my gosh, this is insane or I'm going insane because she kept saying, these are the crazy things that happen in divorce. These are the crazy things people say. Mm -hmm. These are the things attorneys do. So even though it was still upsetting and frightening, um, it wasn't bewildering, if that makes sense. You know, yeah. I was aware of it and it would register in the back of my head going, oh, okay, this is just, you know, a technique the lawyer does. This is just a technique this person does. Um, when you're aware of those things happening, when they're happening to you, they're still scary, but they're not unfamiliar. Yeah. And I can only imagine that once someone says, you slow down, we'll get you through it. I'm here for you. I'm here with you. That's just going to be the greatest gift of all. It is. It is. And for somebody to say, you know, I said one time, oh, I went in the courthouse and this, 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 this happened. It was so upsetting. And she said, you know, it was upsetting to me. It's upsetting to all my clients, especially for me who, you know, I've gotten what made me one parking ticket in my life. You know, to have to go in this courthouse, yeah. and wait in this long line, and then they're mean to you and they tell you to go this way. And then if you ask a question, like when I asked the judge to pee, like I didn't know what to do. And then he admonished me and told me I need to get, I need to signal the bailiff and the bailiff 
whales need to come over and da 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 you know and i was already upset and then here's this judge yelling at me which mm-hmm. made me need to pee even more <laughs> <So> <laughs> wasn't really helping the situation there judge and i didn't mean any disrespect um but you know they're used to dealing with a certain um yeah you know, they're just used to dealing with a certain set of stuff. And, and they uh, have to just put emotion completely aside. They have to be just so clinically factual that they, they're they not looking at the fact that you're trembling in your boots and scared to death. <laughs> they're thinking, okay, this is what's next on the docket. Go. <laughs> And this oh, is the procedure. Go. <laughs> yeah. I was like, the only time I've ever seen any of this stuff was on TV, yeah, you know, so to yeah. sit there and, you know, and I wasn't on trial for murder. It was only a divorce. But still, if you're not used to that, and if you're like me, terrified of anybody in a uniform, yeah. uh, it was just, but to have somebody give you the 411 and flag you on yeah. these things, that really helps a lot. And if nothing else, if people come away with nothing else from today, is not to be scared and and quivering in your boots when you know something's wrong, start the help process. You've got to do that because if uh, you you can't continue the way things are, if there is something wrong, you need to address it. So get the help so that you're doing it in the right process, I guess, is is what we've got to say, Encouraging, uh, encouraging words to end that with. It is. It is. And I do think what yeah. Terry said about like getting your papers in order, that helped me a lot. I had copies of my kids' birth certificates because, you know, those things take time. It and sure I made sure I got my kids' passports, you know, because my ex-husband would have need to sign for them. And we know that wasn't right. going to happen. So I got the passports ahead of time. I mean, I really did have an exit strategy. Um, I had made sure there were credit cards in my own name so that when the credit was frozen, you know, with the joint stuff, um, I had a phone in my own name, you know, a lot of things that you don't think about. And they do right. put these things called ATROs, automatic temporary restraining orders into effect. But who has the $250 to call your attorney every single time there's some violation? Honestly. Yeah. Uh, well, Sandra, we're getting ready for our last break of the day. And after which we're going to welcome um, author John um, I'm sorry, I, I, my screen froze. Nivola, I'm sorry, Mr. Nivola. John Nivola, who is the author of The Last Jump. But before we go to break, we have one of our listeners uh, that we must say hello to. Marcella Stretch is the uh, founder of the Facebook group Parents of Deployed Service Members. They're a wonderful listening group of our audience. We love having them as a part of our audience. And we want to say happy birthday to Marcella. It's her birthday coming. Coming up this week, so I want to send lots of love out to Marcella. She's a great gal, and what a great group, the parents of deployed service members, the uh, P-O-D-S, if you want to go through the acronyms like the military always does. <laughs> so we say happy birthday, Marcella. We love having you in the group. Be back with John in a moment. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Mark Lipinski is coming to Toginet. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski. A live two-hour show Wednesday afternoon starting at 3, 2 central on toginet.com. Creative Mojo. It's fun, entertaining, informative, inspirational, and illuminating. Lipinski has worked on such shows as Oprah, The View, The Joan River Show, and Ricky Lake. He's busy, but he's got the drive to share with Creative Mojo, dedicated to the modern crafter and crafting lifestyle. Dive into the info and enjoy everything from celebs to entertainment news to recipes, quilting and needlework, knitting, painting, woodworking, Christmas crafts, and so much more. This show boldly encourages you to discover and harness your own creative spirit by living creatively every day. For more on Mark and the show, check out marklepinski.com. Don't miss the fun. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski. Wednesday afternoon, starting at 3, 2 Central on toginet.com. 
Lori Hurley, the social networking navigator, helps you overcome your overwhelm online and make social media easy. Every week, she shares the latest and greatest about social networking and welcomes industry experts and end users of different social media platforms to share their experiences moving their business forward online. Whether you are a Facebook fanatic or a lover of LinkedIn, Lori has you covered on all angles of social media, including Twitter, YouTube, blogging, Google+, and more. Lori shares her knowledge and love of educating others on all things social media with relevant material, engaging guests, and hot tips and techniques to help you soar down the social media highway. Join her every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time for the Social Networking News Hour here on the WooHoo Radio Network. We'll put a boot in your ass. It's the American way. Help us Sam, put your name. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Welcome back, everyone. This is Robin Boyd with Sandra Beck today. We've had a busy show so far today. We uh, talked a little bit at the top of the show, uh, sending our condolences to Rita Cosby, uh, author of Quiet Hero, Secrets from My Father's Past. And her father did pass away recently, and we send our condolences. We're sending a happy birthday out to Marcella Stretch of Parents of Deployed Service Members. And we just finished speaking with Terry Sloan, a divorce recovery coach, in the New York area, but you certainly can still get lots of information from her website, terrysloan.com. What a show. <laughs> woo! Yes, woo woo. Um, and coming up, Sandra, we have John Nivola. Uh, he is his, just celebrating his literary debut with The Last Jump, an award winning historical novel based on U.S. airborne operations in Europe during World War II. Uh, Seeing my husband is airborne. I hope he's tuned in. He's going to certainly enjoy hearing uh, what Mr. Navola has to say. John, are you with us? Yes, I am. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, this looks so interesting, and especially because it is in a different generation. Can you give us a little synopsis first off uh, about the book? Uh, sure, Robin. <clears throat> it's historical fiction. Uh, which, which means that uh, the, the stories that are put into the book are, are wrapped around factual history. It's about 500 pages long. It's available in hardcover, softcover, and an e-book on Kindle. And it's basically the story about the son of a deceased World War II hero who's desperately trying to solve a family secret that dates back to the war. Uh, and since his father is gone, he needs to enlist the aid of four of his father's wartime friends who uh, he finds out not only know the secret, but swore an oath never to reveal it. So he frantically probes and pokes and tries to solve this mystery. And that basically is the theme that drives through the book until he finds some shocking conclusions at the end. Hmm. Did, you, did any of this come from some factual content or is this totally in your in your imagination well <laughs> i wish my imagination was that good um, no it, <laughs> it, it the, the, the history is is fact so the places and the events i take these characters through are all real events and places uh, <clears throat> the airborne training the drop in sicily normandy the bulge battle of the bulge the drop on holland they're all factually uh, accurate. But the characters are taken through this plot uh, within the framework of the history that lends a little bit of a mystery to the, to the book. And it's also been called a love story and, uh, and, and, an, action, and an action novel. Well, that's quite the combination. <laughs> A love story and an action novel. You yourself are a veteran, is that correct? That's correct. Yes, and and where did you serve? 
I served in, in uh, Arizona in 1966 and 1968. Uh, the border was a little safer back then, but uh, <sighs> but that but that's where we spent most of our time. Wow, wow. Um, now there must be a, I'm sure that they're being based with some factual locations and whatnot. There must be some uh, interesting points of history in the book, but are there some facts that maybe people don't know? Well, I tried to I tried to accomplish a few things, and one of those things was to to pull out of history some of the events that occurred that that people are, that are, that are not well known, and and so as part of that, we, we talk we, we deal a lot about the contribution of women uh, during World War II, both on the home front and as women Air Force service pilots, the WASPs, and so mm-hmm. one of a uh, number of our characters, the WASPs, and. And and uh, and a few of our characters, part of the love interest, are are shipyard workers working on the home front building uh, aircraft carriers. Well, we also delve into the fact that uh, no African American was awarded the Medal of Honor in World War II, and that problem wow. wasn't remedied until 1997. Really? Uh, that's correct. Where seven African Americans were were awarded uh, the Medal of Honor, six of them posthumously, and only one one was alive to receive the medal, presented in the White House East Room by by President Clinton. Wow. Uh, and so that's not very well known. And uh, there was an all black uh, parachute infantry battalion that formed mm-hmm. up at the end of the war, and they had a special mission, and that wasn't very well known. So. We pulled out of history these obscure little facts that I, we thought people would find interesting, and we built them into the narrative of the story. Wow, that really is fascinating. When when you first started to write this book, did you were you aiming for a particular audience, or was this um, just something that you felt you needed to uh, put down on paper? I think uh, the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really, I really had to get this story out of my head. It was in my head for about twenty years. Oh my! And I was aiming, I was aiming for, uh, I was aiming for the demographic of the of the men who, and women who served during the war, who were losing at the rate of uh, at now fifteen hundred a day. Mm. There's only a million left of the sixteen million who served, and and I thought it was important that they not be forgotten. And so that was the people I was pointing the story toward. What was the what brought you to this story truly? I mean, was this uh, were you always was it because of your military experience, or do you think that you were interested in this because were your parents did your father serve in World War Two? Uh, yes, actually, I can remember back back to those days when our living room was filled with uniforms. Uh, my uncles, really? my uncles were all in the army, and they were seven or eight of them, and, and their friends, and my father's in the Merchant Marine, and his brothers were, were in the Merchant Marine, and we kind of grew up uh, with this surrounding us, and so it was always, it was always part of, um, of my growing up, and, and it, it was something that I just felt a natural affinity for, and as time went on, I read more about it, studied more about it, uh, mm-hmm. into the service, out of the service, tried to wrap some experience into the book, and then finally... When I retired from my full-time job, I, I, I devoted my time and effort to, to do this book. Wow. That's so interesting. And, and uh, part of me wants to ask, too, because I know you're involved with the um, Military Writers Society of America. Once you decided, you said that this book has sort of been with you for 20 years, but when you finally decided to sit down and really put this together – what was your process? Did you just start writing longhand on a pad of paper? Did you really say, okay, this manuscript is going to come together, and you kind of belted it out in a couple of months? Or what was your process? Uh, I, think, I think the best way to describe it would be trial and error. Okay. Uh, four years to write it, a year to edit it with a lot of help. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, thank God for computers, because I don't, I don't believe that if I did this longhand on a pad of legal paper, I would have ever finished it. But you, you build, you build your, you build your story chapter at a time, and uh, and and the characters start to take over. And before you know it, you know you're you're rolling and tossing in your bed, and and the characters are talking to you. 
And they have their own ideas about what they want to do. Isn't that something? It's, it's amazing. And they kind of just fill your head with, uh, with, with where, where to go next. And, and so you finish a draft and you think you're done. And, <laughs> and then you wind up going back to the beginning and starting all over and, and, and finding ways to make it better. And, and we probably did that seven or eight times. And if you had told me I would have to write the book seven or eight times when I started, I probably wouldn't have even started. But that's the way the process played out, and, and, and that's the way we, we had to finish it. I want you to share the value of your editor. How, how valuable is it to seek a, a professional editor? Well, it, 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 is, it is extremely valuable. Uh, mm-hmm. And I had my children and my family uh, edit my book, uh, and one daughter in particular. And mm-hmm. And, you know, we're sitting at my kitchen table, and, and she was excellent. And then we're sitting at my kitchen table, and she's leaning over my manuscript, and she's pointing out my mistakes. <laughs> and, and, it, and the thought occurred to me that 20 years before, we're sitting at the same kitchen table, and I'm pointing out her mistakes, helping her with her homework. And, uh, and so that was a moment where it kind of made it all worthwhile. But the final yeah. product... Uh, once we put it out, we had to go back and, and republish it one time because we found a, a number of errors that I didn't want to stand in the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, but it's, it's very clean and it's very tight right now. And it's been out two years and it's won some awards and the, the reviews have been fantastic. So we're really proud of what we put out there. That's wonderful. Congratulations on the acknowledgement, the awards, the recognitions. That's that's fantastic. Um I understand that a portion of this book, and we've only got a couple of minutes, John, before we have to close the show, um, part of your proceeds are going to charity, I see. That's correct. Uh, that's correct. We, we wouldn't want to do this just, just to do it. We wanted to do it and, and do some good. So so we made an agreement with the Freedom Alliance Scholarship Fund, and, uh, and, and part of the proceeds for the sale of the, of the book, all the versions of the book, hardcover, softcover, e- e-book, are mm-hmm. donated to the Free Alliance Scholarship Fund, which helps pay college tuition for the children of the fallen. And we've uh, we've contributed over nine thousand dollars so far to date uh, to that charity, and we have a very good relationship with Free Alliance. I met with Colonel Oliver North, and uh, he re- he really appreciates what we're doing with the book, and he's helped me he's helped me uh, plug the book and and get some publicity for it. And, and so we're really gratified that we're able to to help the kids who are victims of uh, circumstances that are not that are way beyond their control. What an honor. John Nivola, thank you so much for visiting with us. We want everyone to visit your website, thelastjump.com, and thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Hopefully I can go back someday again. I would love to have you when you have the sequel, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thanks. Very good. Thank you, Robin. Uh- Thank you. Next week, I want to invite everybody back. We've got a very busy show next week. One of our guests next week will be um, my niece, Kristen Boyd. Uh, she is the wife of Lieutenant Colonel Adam Boyd, and she has been a military wife for many, many years, and we want to uh, hear her experiences of being a military wife. We also have um, uh, the... Uh, 